Okay, good morning. Good morning. How are we doing today? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Somebody up here is doing well. Is it too cold for everybody else? Yeah, no, come on, we can warm up. Um, I say that, but when I wake up in the morning, Casey wakes up a little bit before, well, she's one of those people that when the alarm goes off, her head pops off the pillow and she wakes up. I don't even hear the alarm, but she'll try and and wake me up and I'll say, can you turn the fan off? Can you uh, put my robe on the bed? (laughs) Am I giving her? So that's how I get out of bed in the morning when it's so cold is I I try and uh, just jump right into layers and layers and layers. Um, But hey, I'm excited for today. Uh, I think I'm always excited for Sunday mornings, and I refuse to let the cold make me unexcited or less excited, and so uh, we're going to bring a lot of God's truth today, a lot of energy, but we're also going to warm up this room today. Some of us may feel a little bit uncomfortable because we are talking about our words and, and how much our words matter and how much our words actually impact each other, and I'm, I'm going to have to start the service out um, a little bit confrontational and uh, I, I just think that there's kind of no way around it, especially as, as I look at, you know, what some of you, well, let's not say you, but some people are posting on Facebook and social media and, and things like that. And I just feel like this idea that, that our words have weight to it and that our, our words are influential, not only for us, but, but for other people and, and even things that, you, especially what you post online. I mean, that stuff is so, so, so influential uh, in an age of misinformation right now that can just come and, and really do some destruction. But let me start us off with a, a verse. Normally we work Work into a verse, but I'm going to start off with it straight off here. Ephesians 4.29. This is Paul. He's talking to the church of Ephesus. And he's given them in chapter 4 a whole list of things that they should do in order to, to live a Christ-like way. Now, whether you're a, a Christ follower or not, this is also just great advice. Th- this is something that if you apply it to yourself, that it, it will actually impact you in a good way. It will benefit you in a good way, your relationships in a good way. But let's look at what Paul says here. He says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Now, if we were to take this and apply it to ourselves, if everyone in the world applied this verse to how we talk and what we post online, then Facebook would probably go out of business. The news channels and corporations would shut down. Um, talk radio would have nothing to talk about and nowhere to go. The, you know, I think that this would have like a huge impact. It would have a big impact. But the truth is, is that we, we let a lot of unwholesome talk come out of our mouths. And, and I think that becoming aware of what you say is such an important thing to just being human. Because as humans, we have to be in relationship with each other. We've got to have some kind of relationship between me, you, between you, your family. And and by not watching the words that come out of our mouth, we oftentimes find ourselves in a little bit of trouble. So the idea here, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. This is the confrontational part. Now the rest of the message is going to be on how do we do this well. But this is the part where I want you to think quickly, just think, how well do I abide by this right here? And, and I'll say, you know, I'm always vulnerable. I'm always upfront and honest with you guys. There's only one version of me. Uh, there's only one version of things I say. There's not this version and then how I talk in other places. Um, and I, I'll say that th- this is hard for me too. It's very hard. So, so if it's hard for you, it's okay. But let's recognize how hard it is and then let's learn from it and let's move on. So We're not going to let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths. But I will talk about two categories. There's two main categories of our words. Two categories of of the way that we talk. And and the first one is is the words that we say and the words that we hear. Now, this right here is is important because uh, the words that you say and the words that you hear, they can have a direct impact on somebody. So I'll give you an example uh, does anyone, this is for our, mostly probably our guys out here, anybody remember the first time you were put in the friend zone? Does anybody? Are you guys awake out there? Do we know what friend zone is? Do, do we? We don't know what friend, some of us don't know what the friend zone is. The friend zone is when you as a guy find a girl that you like or that you enjoy, that you would like to get to know, that you would like to date, that you would like to have a relationship with. 
And as you, as you do that, you'll kind of take anything that you can get from her. And so she may say, do you want to run an errand with me? You know, she may confide in you and chat with you and talk to you. And you're hoping and praying for some kind of relationship to develop out of this. But then one day you hear the word that she says, and it's something along the lines of, you're my best friend. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. Or it's something along the lines of, I just see you as a great brother. Yeah. Just, just so that you know, if you hear that, and some of you are realizing that that's happening right now <laughs> in real time, that you're dead in the water, man. That relationship is not going to happen because it, it's very rare that a, a, a gentleman works his way out of the friend zone and into uh, the romantic zone. So just give up on it. Save yourself a lot of headache. But that word that you hear, brother, best friend, that has a big impact on you. Now, also, the words that you say have a big impact on others because you can really say things to put people in a good mood. You can say things that put people like in a bad mood. So there's, there's words that you say and there's words that you hear. Now, the second category, which is almost even more important, is that there's words that we don't say and there's words that we don't hear. Now, th this, is, this is something that it's harder for me to find kind of a, a lighthearted um, you know, uh, example of this right here. But the, the one that I thought of, the one that a lot of people think of when they come to this is, is how many, th this idea of the words that I don't hear. You know, we have this aching, like kids, we have this aching to be loved by our parents. And there are those of us out there and, and, and people that we know that have this, you know, unfortunate life where they grow up and they never hear a father especially a father, say the words, I love you. And so the fact that that's something that was never said or something that was never heard has had a real impact on them. So the bottom line is that there's words that we say that have an impact and there's words that we don't say that have an impact. And the fact that the words that we don't say probably have a greater impact than the words that we do say then that just lets us know that, that the words that even that we do say also matter so much. It, it's a, it all points to how much this actually matters. It, it, it's like we don't understand and we don't understand the, the responsibility or even the power that we have. I would say that we even have power. That the words that, that are spoken to us, the words that are spoken over us, the words that are spoken at us, and even the words that are spoken about us end up shaping so much of our future. And so that's why we're doing this series here, the series of the weight of our words. And, and, and I, I'll tell you, I struggled with this message. It's such a good message, and it's got such good truth into it. But I, I really struggled with, okay, how does it become more than just good advice? How does it become more than just uh, like something you can put in your pocket and pull out later when somebody says something bad to you and you can say, hey, you know what? Your words have weight to them. I learned from Pastor Chris that uh, what you're saying is, is you can't say that to me because you need to understand how wrong that is. Now, I wanted it to be more than that. I wanted us to understand what exactly this means, the weight of our words. And, and as I thought about you guys, because I always ask myself this question, and sometimes this really bites me um, when I ask this, is that on... Saturday nights, I'll ask myself the question, but why does this matter to you? Why does this matter to you? And sometimes I can't answer that question. And do you know what I do when I can't answer the question? I start over and I just redo the whole sermon all over again until I can answer the question of why does this matter to you? Because I don't want to be so entitled that I stand up here and just because I say it or just because I give you a Bible verse or just because I say that the Bible says it or that this is good advice, that you're just going to walk away with it and apply it to your life. I don't want to be entitled to just expect that from you. And so I always ask myself, why does this actually matter? And, and for, for this series, I was able to kind of say this, this does matter because this is one of those things that has the most potential. One of the things that has the, some of the biggest potential to actually shape your life and to shape the lives of those that are around you. Also, this is one of those things that has the most potential to fast in the fastest way, in the, most, uh, in, in the quickest way 
how to turn your life around or how to turn around the lives of somebody else. In fact, if you're in a broken relationship, and, and I know that we, we all have them, I, I know that there's some in here. If you're in a broken relationship, the fastest way that you can start mending that relationship is by understanding the weight of your words. And so I, I can confidently say up here, the reason that this series, that this message matters to you is that it can not only fix and mend your life faster than almost any other piece of advice, but it can also impact your life in such a deep and meaningful way. And so in this series, I'm going to be giving three considerations for us to take. These, these things are just kind of uh, pieces of good advice, but these are three considerations that we need to look at and take when it comes to the way that, the, the way that we talk. So let's look at the first one here. The first consideration is this, and today we're just going to focus on, go back one, Karina's giving you guys a sneak peek at what's ahead there, is that words are not equally weighted. And we're only going to look at one of these a week, and so next week we'll get the next one, but the first one is this, your words are not equally weighted. That means that not all your words count the same. So that means that... Um, and I hate you, and then I love you doesn't necessarily count the same. It means that um, you look fat today, and a, no, I think you're beautiful inside, those don't count the same, right guys? Okay, just making sure again, you guys are alive. Some of you are laughing harder than others. I see you, Keith. Um, but our words are not equally weighted. That, that's the truth for today. That's your takeaway. That's what you're going to take home. Is this understanding that my words don't weigh the same. And so here's a couple categories for you. We've got light words and we've got heavy words. And when it comes to light and heavy, there's light words which are, let me put it to you this way, like um, words that, like you look nice today, does not count as much. Maybe it's not heavy as heavy as, as I love you. But there's words that, that, weigh a little bit and words that weigh a lot. And the problem with us is that we come into this thinking, okay, all my words are the same, especially people that I, I love when people start a conversation or they enter into a conflict and they say, but you just need to, un you just need to know me because if you knew me, then you would understand that I'm just joking with you and you shouldn't take something that seriously. And I, I'm like, it's, it's not my responsibility to create a card catalog of everybody in my life and write their uh, personality preferences on it so that when I walk up to you, I say, okay, it's nice to meet you. And I pull your card out and I say, okay, sarcastic, doesn't think about what he says, don't be offended. Um, they'll forget my name when I walk away from them. And then everything that you say, I filter through that card. And then when I go meet somebody else, I pick up their card and I say, okay, super sensitive is going to be offended by everything that I say. Um, you know, and I, I can't walk around, we can't walk around with, with a catalog in our head of everyone's preferences. We, and so when someone says to me, you know, hey, hey Chris, you know, I, I, I know that maybe I hurt that person, but they just need to understand, they don't know who I am. They just need to get to know who I am. And what I would say is, actually, we all need to realize that not all of our words are light and not all of our words are heavy. And some people will see things as different weights. So we think that we're walking around with, with a, a word that's 5 kg and we throw it around and we throw it around and everything's funny and everything's fine. And then all of a sudden we pick up something and we throw a word around and we think it's also a 5 kg and it's not. It's 100 kilograms and it hurts somebody's feelings. Have you ever been in a conversation with, with a spouse? This is why Casey and I don't joke with each other. I mean, we have fun. We talk to each other. And, and we laugh and we tell stories and all that. But we don't pick at each other. And some of you, your relationships terrify me because you guys pick at each other constantly. But I've been a bystander before where I've seen this play out, where a friendship or a relationship starts out and, and they're, you know, they, they kind of take a jab at each other and they're joking and everyone's smiling and all of a sudden somebody says something, and, you know, like, well, I don't like your mother-in-law. She's horrible. And then it gets, you, you just feel the energy in the room just, whoa. they thought they were throwing a 5 kg weight with that word, but it ended up being a whole lot heavier and it just kills the conversation kills the mood. We need to understand that there's light words, there's heavy words. There's also positive words and there's negative words. 
And positive and negative doesn't necessarily mean light and heavy. Negative words can be very light. They can also be heavy. Same with positive. But we need to understand a big part of this right here is, is did you know that on average, they say that it takes about 10 positive words to equal the same as one negative word. So, you know, I, let's take me for example. I, I walk off stage here on a Sunday morning, and I can have uh, every single person in this room say, that was a great service. Not just my part, but everybody's part. And then if I go home and, and I walk in the door and Casey says, man, today was horrible. What happened there? You know, which she would never say and does, has never said. But all of a sudden, all those positive words are, poof, thrown out the window. And I'm going to focus just on this one negative thing. So bosses, managers, are you balancing out your positive to negative? Moms, dads, dads, as you uh, are, are with your kids, with your sons, are you critical? Are you overcritical? Is all they're hearing the negative? Are they also hearing the positive? What is it that you're saying? What is it that you're not saying? So it's positive and negative here. But we need to understand that we need a whole lot more positive to equal that negative. And then kind of the last category I have here is the situationally light and heavy words. And again, I can use love here, you know, uh, as another example. If I say, I love this apple, that is not the same as me saying, I love Casey. That is not the same kind of love. And in fact, situations can change how heavy a word is or how heavy a word is not based on what kind of situation that you're in. So situationally, you can be in a spot where it is okay to joke. But if your wife is crying and upset because, you know, she's been hurt by somebody at work, it's probably not the best time to say something lighthearted or a joke. Or if you do, it comes across as something heavier. You know, that, that's not the, probably the time to say, you know, hey, you've got peanut butter smeared across your face there. Because she's been dealing with your kids. So we've got light and heavy. We've got positive. We've got negative. And then there's situations that apply. Your words matter. Your words have weight. And they don't all weigh the same. And so we're going to pick back up with this verse that Paul uh, leads us to here in Ephesians. And Paul's writing this letter to the church of Ephesians. And we're going to, I thought it would be kind of fun this morning for me to kind of show you how I study the Bible. So I'm going to take you guys through this verse in the same way that, that I will go through a verse. This is how I gather meaning from it. This is how I kind of learn about the Bible. So if you don't know how to study the Bible... If you don't know how to kind of figure out what God is saying in, in the Bible, this is a great way for you to learn how to do this. And it's not, it's not complicated. It's not technical. It's quite easy. So Paul says in this verse, in, in Ephesians 4.29, and he's speaking to the body of Christ. He's speaking to the church. You know, there's also a verse that Paul says that we are not to judge those that are outside the church because Jesus said we're supposed to go and love those people. Love them and only love them. That's, that's our mandate there. But people within the church, if you're a member here, if you're coming to church, if you're in community or you're serving, then, then we do have the ability to judge you. And what I mean by judge is, is hold you to a godly standard. And so what Paul is saying by this is he's saying, hey, church and church members, I want to hold you to a godly standard. I want to hold you to it, this standard because it's good for you. It's a standard that will help your life, that will benefit you. And so he tells them this. There's so much in this verse here. He says, okay, guys, church, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Now, this word unwholesome, so this is how I study the Bible. This is where I start from. I, I find a word that I like, unwholesome. Okay, what does that mean here? Did you know that in the original text for unwholesome, it references like rotten fruit and rotten fish? So what Paul is saying here is you don't want to let rotten fruit and putrid fish come out of your mouth. See, what Paul is, is helping us understand is that our mouth is like a gate and we are the gatekeepers. And so it's our role and our job to try and keep that gate closed when it needs to be closed and open when it needs to be open. But in order for rotten fruit and putrid fish to come out of your mouth, we've got to recognize what are we putting in that's impacting what comes out. And so if you're putting rotten and putrid things in through TV, through the movies that you watch, the people that you hang out with, 
If you're putting those things in, then when you open your mouth and speak, it's going to be bad stuff that comes out. So he's saying, Christ followers, church, be careful here. Don't let anything unwholesome come out of your mouth. There's also with that, hey guys, make sure you're putting the right thing in so that as you put good things in, good things come out. So if you find yourself, if every time you open your mouth and you say something, it's negative, it's critical, it tears somebody down, it doesn't build up, it doesn't help somebody, then you may have some rotten fruit and putrid fish in there that needs to be dealt with. And you may need to look at what you're putting in so that what comes out is a bit better. So now we continue back into the verse. And so we go to the next part that I found very interesting here. Do not let any unwholesome talk Come out of your mouths. I'm also hoping that this helps you memorize this verse. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. So this part, but only. You know what that means? But only. See, what Paul is saying is you don't have an option. You don't have a choice. So right now, let's assume I'm speaking to two different groups of people. We've got those of you that identify as a Christ follower. And then we have those of you that don't identify as a Christ follower. And in fact, I hope there's a whole bunch of you that don't identify as a Christ follower. I hope that you find today a good service. I hope you find this a good experience for you. And I hope you feel super welcome to be here. And so these things that I'm saying now for the but only, it doesn't apply to you. So you can just sit back and you can relax and you can actually gain an understanding of what we expect our church to act like and our Christ followers to act like. Now, for those of you that are Christ followers, there's, there's, there, you can't get around this here. Paul is saying, but only. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But only what? So Paul is saying, you don't have a choice. And so if, if we look at, I, I found in Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 2. Look at what Paul's talking about here. He says, follow God's example. So th- this again is to the church. It's to us. He says, follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us, he gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Jesus sacrificed himself for us. And therefore, we're supposed to walk in the way of love. Now, this phrase here, walk in the way of love. You know, what what that means is that we're going to follow Jesus. and We're going to love the way that he did. And so if we follow Jesus through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can gain an understanding of how Jesus walked in love. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it was always fruity and flowery. It didn't, when Jesus loved somebody, a rainbow didn't burst from the sky and doves didn't take off from the ground and you didn't hear soft ambient music in the background and people didn't, you know, feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. Sometimes love looked like turning over the tables in the temple. When he walked in and he found money changers, people that were using the temple for their own purpose and to kind of manipulate for more money. So out of love, he turned their tables over and he kicked them out. You know, personally, that's one of my favorite stories to justify my behavior. When I get mad at somebody on the phone or in traffic and I say, you know, out of love, I want you to get out of the way. You guys are quiet this morning. You guys are quiet. Yeah, that Lindsay's not. Thank you, Lindsay. So what Jesus is saying here is he's, he's showing us the example through the way that he loved us. He gave his life to die for us. He, he, he bled, he, or he cried tears of blood for us. He sacrificed for us. He, he was beaten for us. He didn't judge out of his love for us. Jesus didn't, he didn't put people down. He didn't hurt people. See, Jesus set the example for what the gospel is. And he set the example for what love is. And so as a Christ follower, when Paul says, but only, you go back one more, Karina. When Paul says, but only, walk in the way of love. As a Christ follower, we have the example, the standard, and that's it. There's no deviation there. And in fact, now Karina, you can put it up here. There's this just this awesome truth for us as Christians to understand. We get to choose whether or not to follow Jesus. We get that option. But we don't get to choose what it looks like, how it reacts, or what it sounds like. So if we choose to follow Jesus, 
then we sacrifice and we give up our, our right or our ability or our entitlement to say this is what it should look like, this is what it should sound like, and this is what I should react like. Instead, we look to Jesus. He is our only model. That's what Paul means by but only. So what Paul is saying, but only look at the way Jesus does it, and that's the way that you're to do it. So now, let's move on with the verse here. We go back into it. Do not let any unwholesome talk. So we know what unwholesome talk is. It's fish breath. And he says, don't let your fish breath come out of your mouths, but only, but only, we know what he means by but only. He's saying, but only, Jesus is your model. You can only use that model. But only what is helpful for building others up. Helpful for building. You know, as, as I thought about that phrase, what, what does he mean by helpful for building? Helpful for building, it's, it's, it's like, imagine a construction site. These are building blocks. How do we build somebody up? See, we're only supposed to use words. And we're only supposed to say things that are helpful for building people up. We don't tear things down. We don't tear people down. We build people up. We lay the foundation for people. Somebody is insecure in your life and you know that they're insecure about the way that they look. And you can tell them, hey man, you look great, you look great today. Or you can, you can speak into somebody's life that deals with guilt and shame and you can help them to build a better foundation around that so that they're not walking on a foundation of guilt and shame. Instead, they're walking on a foundation of forgiveness, a foundation of healing. See, our building blocks, things that are helpful for building. You know, that also makes me think about a, a building block is not made of sand. If you, if you were to build on top of sand, that would be very... Um, it, it, would, it would move, it would break, it would fall down. But if you build on top of a good foundation, then it stays, it stands firm forever. You know, when you throw insults at somebody, you're, you're basically getting people to build on sand. When you get on Facebook or, or Twitter or Instagram and you criticize somebody for what they've said or the way that they dress or, or some stance that they've taken, even if their stance is wrong, it's not our role to cast sand underneath them. It's not our role to throw sand at their feet. What our role is to do is to build into them and to build firm building blocks for them. Things that they can build on. Things that Jesus can build on. You know, some of the things that we need to start saying more to people is, hey, you know, God loves you. And I, I love you. It doesn't mean you have to like the person. But it does mean that we're called to love people. So when we say, when Paul talks about building blocks, when Paul says that, you are going to only say words that are helpful for building. That means that these are good words. These are firm foundation words. And then he, he goes on here in the next part of this verse. It says they're helpful for building. But now he, here he's going to tell us what, it's, what, what they're building towards or what they're building for. They're building according to their needs. Now, th this is something that is so hard for, for so many of us. See, it says they're building according to their needs. So you're going to say something that is foundationally a building block that's kind for somebody according to their needs. That's not as easy to do as we think because here's how we end up doing it. I'm going to say something that's kind and foundation building according to what I think that their need is. See, that's very different. A lot of times we get so burdened by our idea of what somebody else needs to hear that we forget that it's actually not about us and what we think they need to hear. It's about us dying to ourselves or sacrificing our own agenda, putting our own agenda aside and saying, okay, what is it that this person needs to hear? And now I'm only going to speak something positive about what they need to hear. See, so this part here, this their needs, this requires there to be less of you and more of God, which is going to lead you to more of them, which is going to lead you to caring about them more. This statement here could solve probably 90% of your family issues. It can solve probably 90% of your relationship issues. If you're in a fight with somebody right now, you can do this today. You can say, what do I think they need to do? Versus, what is God telling me to do for them? See, that's different. What do I think they need to do? Or what is God telling me that I need to do for them? What I need to do for them is say I'm sorry. 
Or what I need to do for them is tell them, hey, you know what? I, I love you. Or I forgive you. Or, uh, you know, you are an amazing person. You're really good at what you do. I can see that you're a loving person, a caring person. Because you've given up what I think they need to hear. And you've asked God, tell me what I need to do for them. Now, Paul goes on, and just to, to round this out here, he says in this verse, Do not let any unwholesome talk, no fish breath, come out of your mouths. But, you're only, but only, no other option. Anything else that comes up, God's going to be like, nah, nah. -uh. It's like I'm talking to Wyatt. Our, our little one, one and a half year old. I'm like, nah, don't touch that. Nah. You know, he thinks his name is nah. Because <laughs> every time he does something, he looks at me like, can, you know, can I do this? Can I touch this? And I'm like, ah, and you know. And so anytime you get ready to say something that, that doesn't fall under that, but only God, if you're a Christ follower, God's like, ah, no, 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 no. You don't get to say that. So we're only saying what's helpful for building people up. And we're only saying what's helpful for building people up according to their needs and not your burden, not what you think their need is. And the reason that we're doing that is so that it may benefit those who listen. So we, we want to do this for the good and the benefit of others. And we want to do this so that other people are better than they currently are now. We, we want to do this so that it benefits them. We want to pour into people. We want people to be better. We want people to feel better about themselves. We want people to accept truths that they have a hard time accepting. We want people to walk into more freedom. And instead of just telling somebody what they want to hear over and over and over again, this part of benefiting those who listen, it, this may be you telling somebody something that they don't want to hear. And the reason that you can actually do this there's a, a very important phrase here, and it's this, that intent is just as important as content. So the intent of what you're saying really sets up the content of what you're going to say. So if you find that you really love somebody, that you're really trying hard to not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, that, that if you can only say unwholesome things... You're taking your heart to God and you're saying, God, remove all the fish. God, remove all the, all the gunk that's in me. Just take all that out. Let me have a clean heart. In fact, I'll, here's the process for, for you. This is a process that you can walk through today. First thing you're going to do is you're going to say, God, show me what's in my heart. Because what's in your heart is going to impact what comes out of your mouth. So if there's a mess in your heart, there's going to be a mess that comes out of your mouth. God's going to say, okay, here's what's going on in your heart. You need to seek forgiveness for something you've done. You need to apologize for something you've done. You need to take a minute and just recognize that I'm God and I'm good and I've got your life under control. It's God, what's going on in my heart? Then God shows you what's going on in your heart. And if there's only putrid things that come out, maybe you need to take a walk or go for a drive. And you get that part right. And so now you can say something that is, is helpful to somebody because it follows what Jesus would say. Because you've started with your heart. Now what comes out of your mouth can be good. And now you're asking God, okay, God, let me see in this person or in these words that I say, let me see something that can help build them up or that can help build up my community or build up a group of people. Let me build them up. And you, you've been honest and, and, you, and you've, you've confessed to God and God's gotten your heart right and, and you're, you're, you're saying, I only want to use words that, that benefit others and build them up. And you find yourself in a position, in a posture where you can actually see that your intent is different because it's no longer about what you think they need to hear and now it's more about what you know that God wants you to do for them. So your intent is important as your content. Because when you've taken yourself through that whole process, now you've earned the right to speak into somebody's life, maybe in a way that would be really hard. Like, hey, I see that you've been really, really upset and sad lately. I'm worried about you. Maybe are you depressed? See, pe people don't receive that conversation well if you've not taken the time to get your intent in the right place. 
But when you've fed them positive, when you've been building into them, when you've examined your own heart, when you're speaking to their needs and not your agenda, then your intent is in the right place. And then you have the ability to say, hey, I see this in your life and I think we need to address this. I think we need to work on this. See, we focus so much on the content part. But what we need to look at more is the intent part. And before we have any confrontational or critical or crucial conversation, uh, or here at church, I also love the term corrective conversation. Before you have any kind of corrective conversation, you need to look at what your intent is. And if you're not sure what your intent is, look at Ephesians 4.29 and make sure that your intent is in the right place so that your content is received as beneficial for them. And so the truth that we're walking away from with today is, is this. It's a, it's a simple one. It's words are not equally weighted. I don't want you to look at this through a lens of fear or negativity. It's the first thing that I think. Words aren't equally weighted. Oh no, that means some of my words are, are, are really bad and really damaging. And we could just be damaging people. But also the flip side to that is that there's some heavy, heavy words that can change someone's life. It can change your life. It can change the lives of those that are around you. Our words are not equally weighted. Now, I've got one more appeal to you before we call the band up to lead us in a, in a, a very special song today that they're doing. And my appeal to you is this, is that if you find yourself in the camp of a Christ follower, I want you to really think about the words that you say and the words that you don't say. I want you to look up Ephesians 4.29 when you get home. I want you to read that verse. And let God, don't worry about remembering everything I said, but let God wake stuff up in you. Let, let parts of it come out to you. And start applying that to your life. And, and, and now, if you find yourself, you're, if you're not a Christ follower, then I, I hope my, my appeal to you is that you can look in on what it is to be a Christ follower. And that you can know that, hey, as Christ followers, our goal is to be loving, to be kind, uh, to be helpful, to be positive building blocks in people's lives. So if you've had a bad experience with church, or you've had a bad experience with, with Christians, I'm so sorry for that. And, and that's because church is full of people and people are broken and, and Christians are people and people are still broken whether they're a Christ follower or not. And yes, negative things end up happening. But remember, I want you to see what it is that we're teaching, what it is that Jesus has called us to. So, so don't let maybe a negative experience with a person turn you off to this. Instead, look, look at what we've taught today. Look at what Jesus has said for us to do with our words. And maybe... That's something that's attractive to you. Maybe you would consider looking at Jesus for more wisdom, turning to Jesus for more things, listening to that friend that does want to tell you about a Savior that died for you. And so I'm going to close this down in prayer here. And as I pray, I'm going to pray that God puts words on your heart, that God awakens in you words that are, are good, words that are bad, that God draws Something from Ephesians 4.29 to you. So Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for just how good you are. Um, I thank you, Father, for how much you love us. In fact, as I stand up here, and Father, I want to do something, and I pray that you would bless this. Um, and so with, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed right now, uh, I, I want you to just think about the person sitting next to you. And, and don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to talk to them. I'm not going to ask you to touch their shoulder. I'm not going to ask you to do anything with them. So it's just you and your chair. You've got somebody on your left, somebody on your right. I want you to just think about that person. Even if you don't know them, that's okay. Just, okay, I've got a human being on my side. And, and now what I want you to do is I want you to just silently just in sort of a prayerful manner, I want you to just pray a positive word for them. And the great thing is, is you don't even have to know them. You don't have to know them at all. If you, and if you don't know how to pray, if you've never prayed, then, then just, you don't have to say anything at all. You just hang tight. So Lord, I, I pray that um, throughout the room right now, 
that every single person in this room is getting something just positive prayed over them. And Father, if people don't know what to pray, then, then drop a word in their heart. But some examples could be, uh, Jesus loves you. Some examples could be, I, I don't know you, but, but the fact that you're here sitting next to me, it's because of a purpose. And so Jesus, you know, speak to this person. You know, if you know the person, if they're uh, in a relationship with you, friend or family, then you can say something more intimate towards them. You can pray that prayer for them. But Lord, I pray that, that throughout this room, that people are taking an opportunity to practice saying positive life building things over the people that are next to them. And if you're sitting next to somebody that you had an argument with this morning, somebody that's already rubbed you wrong, then please, I implore you to just silently, they don't have to know you're saying it, but just silently pray something positive over them, something life building over them, call out in them something that you know is unique and special and amazing to them. So Lord, as we have all had something spoken over us and prayed for us that's positive, I pray, Father, that you now do the work and you move and that you continue to work in people's lives and people's hearts and in the words that they say. And Father, I pray that part of what, what makes South Point a, a catalyst, a jumping off point for so many people to come to know you, Jesus, and get an opportunity to have an encounter with you is because we say life-giving things here. We call out the best in people. We want to have a reputation here that if you think the worst of yourself, then you know to go to South Point Church because South Point and its members, the people that are in it, are going to say the best in you. They're going to claim the best for you. They're going to speak God's truth over you. And so, Lord, I pray that that reputation just spreads throughout our city, that this is the place where people come to be believed in, the place where people come to be hoped for, the place where people come to be considered family. So Jesus, we pray this in your name. We declare it in your authority, Jesus. Amen.